Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick. This is gonna be our first look vid at the new Garmin Epix Pro Watch. Now, a few of us have had access to the Epix Pro ahead of its launch and the embargo today. I've actually had the watch for more than 10 days, but we haven't been able to link the watches to Garmin Connect, which does mean we've missed out on some of the new features on the watch, uh, which I'll come on to in a few minutes, which means we're not really framing this as a first look review because we haven't been able to test some features, although we have been able to test other new features and the watches in general fairly extensively ahead of this launch. We'll come back with our full review uh, in a couple of weeks time when we have been able to link the watches to Garmin Connect. So the Garmin Epix Pro and the new Garmin Phoenix Pro are new high-end watches within Garmin's range. The Epix Pro comes in to supersede the Garmin Epix 2, which launched last year, adding a few new features and some new sizes to the range. So the Garmin Epix Pro comes in three sizes. It's the standard Phoenix sizes we've seen from Garmin in the past. So the smaller model is 42 millimeter model. This is the 47 millimeter model, which is the same as the Garmin Epix 2. And then there's a larger 51 millimeter model as well. As with the Epix Gen 2, the key feature on the watch is the bright AMOLED touchscreen you get there, in contrast to the memory and pixel display on the Phoenix range and the Enduro 2 watches. The new watches are expensive. They cost from £829.99 in the UK or $899.99 in the US, and that's for the standard steel model. There are also sapphire models in the range that have titanium bezels and sapphire screens, and the cost of those goes right up to £1,099, 99 pence in the UK, and the same price in the US in dollars. The cheapest sapphire models cost from £929, 99 pence. With the standard models, you're getting a steel bezel and a steel case back with a Corning Gorilla Glass screen. And then on the sapphire models, you're getting titanium bezels and case backs and sapphire crystal screens. The screen sizes are 1.2 inches for the smallest watch, 1.3 inches for the middle watch, and then 1.4 inches for the biggest watch with differences in the pixel densities as well. The watches come with silicon bands and they look very similar to the old Epix 2, but with a couple of big design changes on them. One is that you get a flashlight on the watch across the range. So all sizes of the Epix Pro have a flashlight built in, which you can activate by double tapping the backlight. And then that has four brightness settings for white light and then a red light as well. And the other probably even bigger change is the new heart rate monitor on the watch, which Garmin says should improve the performance of the heart rate tracking on the watches. There are two new performance metrics on the watch as well. One is hill score and one is endurance score. These are both color coded graphs that essentially show how good you are at running up hills. And then the endurance score is how good you are at sustaining long efforts across sports. These take two weeks to load on the watch if you can't link up to Garmin Connect. If you link them up to Garmin Connect, you'll immediately get uh, your scores based on your training history. We couldn't do that and I haven't had the watch. I think I've had 12 days of running with this watch. I haven't got my Hiller Endurance score yet. So that's something we'll have to cover in our full review. There's also some new sports modes on the watches, including basketball and football. And all models in the Epix Pro range have multi-band GPS. Uh, whereas with the Epix 2, that was only available on the Sapphire models. The maps also have some changes. One is that you can set the weather forecast to be overlaid on the map. So you can see if there's any upcoming uh, worrying weather conditions you need to be concerned about whilst following a route on your wrist. The upper head feature will also now show uh, checkpoints on the map itself to think like aid stations and there's some new shading uh, which should hopefully make the maps a little clearer to read. The watch also has a redshift mode which will change the screen colors to shades of red late in the day otherwise you're getting a lot of standard stuff for Garmin watches. The Epix Pro range has a waterproof rating of 1080m and they have all the sensors you'd expect on board things like compass, altimeter, pulse oximeter and link to external sensors via both Bluetooth and ANT+. Battery life is going to be an interesting feature on these watches, but not in the 47mm version, which is exactly the same as on the Epix 2. You're getting around six days of battery in always-on mode. You can extend that by turning on raise to wake and 15 hours of multi-band GPS tracking in the always-on mode. You lose a little bit of battery life with the smaller Epix Pro watch, as you'd expect. But what I didn't expect is how big the jumping battery life is going to be with the 51mm Epix Pro watch, which might really make it the most interesting watch of the new releases. Obviously, it's great to have the smaller watch out there for a smaller wrist, but the 51mm is going to offer things like 11 days of battery life in watch mode even with the screen always on and you're looking at like 82 hours of gps in race to wake mode so that's quite a big jump uh, and impressive battery numbers for a watch with an amoled screen as always with a garmin launch uh, one of the key bits of information is which older watches will be getting the features uh, that have been introduced on the new watches so far all i can confirm is that the phoenix 7 and epix 2 watches that are already out will be getting the new software features from the pro watches so hill score and endurance score in particular will be rolling out on the phoenix 7 series and the Epix 2. So a week with the Epix Pro. 
like I guess everyone else in the video is going to say, obviously it's not long enough to test some of the features. I haven't been able to test the hill score, I haven't been able to test the endurance score because you need to have it on your wrist for two weeks for Garmin to even give you that kind of data. Um, that said, I am a big fan. This is the 42 millimeter version, so it's a little bit smaller and it's smaller than the original Epix and it's the smallest one in the new Epix kind of lineup. And I think it looks really great on my wrist. I haven't had any problems with it fitting. I've also got the Quick Fit, it's, a, it's called the Quick Fit 20 band and this fits me perfectly. This is the best fitting Garmin strap that I've ever had in all my years of testing Garmin. So I do think they're making things smaller, they're making things fit better. They're obviously not marketing the smaller watch as a female watch, but as a female, I like how this fits on my wrist. And I do find even next to my 965 now, you can see the differences in the strap. Like it, this just feels a lot bigger on my wrist. I still love the really beautiful AMOLED screen, obviously. And I think the heart rate monitor wise, I have been impressed. I've not been able to sync this to my phone because it's we've been testing it pre-launch, but I have used a heart rate strap and I found that the two are pretty spot on. Obviously, I've never had a problem with the wrist-based heart rate monitor on older Garmin's, but I do think they're saying it's a new sensor and I have been impressed. I think it is super accurate. The other big, big difference, I guess, between this and the original Epix is the flashlight. And I think, for me, as a female who does a lot of running alone, I love features like this. I think it helps you, one, be seen better by cars, but also there are lots of kind of, you know, it, it just makes you feel brighter and a bit, so, I don't know, you can put kind of an SOS flash on if you need. I've set it up so I can press the button twice and the flashlight comes on and I've just, I think it's a clever feature. I really have enjoyed it. But is that enough? to, if you already own the Epix, would you upgrade because it's got a flashlight? Absolutely not. I mean, you can use a light on your phone or you could buy a torch for far less money than the Garmin Epix Pro. But that said, I think if you're upgrading from an older Forerunner, things like the new monitor and the flashlight and cool fit, it's, it's, a, it's a good smartwatch. If you're looking for a watch that kind of has everything you could ever need from a fitness perspective, but looks really cool, from a smartwatch perspective and has some little extras that are handy, it's a good watch to to think about. It's obviously quite expensive. At the price it is, it's probably kind of marketing against people that might be looking at like things like the Apple Watch Ultra. I would personally, I found this more comfortable to wear than the Apple Watch Ultra, which has got the huge screen, the 49 millimeter screen. You know, this is 42 and it's, it's much more comfortable for me on my wrist. Um, but yeah, I have really enjoyed testing it. I'm looking forward to doing a lot more testing with it but they're my early thoughts after a week of running with it. So I, also, I wasn't really expecting a new Epix model uh, this year. The Epix 2 was obviously a really interesting new watch from Garmin last year and ticked a lot of boxes for people in being a Phoenix with an AMOLED screen. These new Pro watches, both the Epix and the Phoenix, are quite interesting. Some of the stuff is quite interesting on them, but looking at the features on paper, I wasn't entirely convinced they were gonna be must-haves all round. Uh, I'm still probably in that boat, though we haven't been able to test all the features, like I say, but it's certainly been interesting to use new watches and test out that new heart rate monitor so far even without the connect access to look at things like hill score and endurance score. So, so far I've done eight runs, I've done a bike ride and some strength and yoga sessions. And on the accuracy front, the, the watch has been excellent, the Epix Pro. GPS has been as good as you expect from a Garmin multiband watch. It's tracked my uh, runs very accurately, getting me on the right side of the road, hitting turns correctly and all that stuff. It's matched up really well to a 400 965. Sometimes taking a little bit longer to lock onto GPS at the start of runs, but I think that's just because I'm not yet linked up to Garmin Connect. It wouldn't be a problem I'd expect in the future. The heart rate accuracy has also been excellent. So <laughs> I'm not a big fan of optical heart rate monitoring. I tend to use a chest strap just to get the most accurate data into training analysis features on watches. But so far across eight runs, the um, Epix Pro hasn't really missed a beat. It's been pretty much bang in line with the chest strap I've been uh, comparing it to throughout runs. At the start of runs, occasionally you'll get a little wobble for a couple of minutes while it locks on properly. It might go a little bit higher, a little bit low, but nothing prolonged enough to affect the kind of training status of that run. And then when I go up a hill or do another kind of surge, it maybe lags very slightly behind the reading from a chest strap, but probably only something you'd notice if you were you know, staring at the watch like I was to test the heart rate monitoring on it. So, so far, so good on the heart rate monitoring front. It's been really accurate for me. 
caveat here is I've obviously only done eight runs across uh, 10 days and it's been in warm conditions when heart rate monitoring from optical monitors tends to be a little bit better. So it's stuff, something we'll definitely look at again in the full review to see if it is going to be possible to uh, ditch the chest strap monitor, but so far so good. Flashlight is a nice addition to the watch. I thought I was going to use this a lot because I've just had a new kid, so I thought I'd be creeping around a dark house quite a lot to deal with you know, crying babies, but actually my other child requires the house to be very bright indeed because she's scared of monsters and so my house is quite light. I haven't used the flashlight much, I've not been out camping, but having used it on the Enduro 2 and Phoenix 7X in the past, it basically comes in very handy at times as another light that is quite bright when you are you know, outdoors uh, at night. Um, but So it's good to have it across all the models in the Epix Pro range. Haven't really noticed any real differences with the maps myself yet. The design in general remains excellent. The screen is very bright, easy to read in all conditions, certainly more impressive than a transflector display when you're under cloud cover or in dappled light. In bright sunlight, it's a bit closer. Sometimes the, you know, the Phoenix's display will be a bit easier to read, but in general, the key feature on the Epix is the AMOLED screen and it's, you know, it's really fantastic. Only thing I will say is the 47 millimeter model I've been testing against the 4965 and that has a bigger, slightly brighter screen, which is interesting because it's a much cheaper watch and you know, really is a, a big tick in the 965. Box. Obviously, I haven't been able to test the hill score and endurance score yet. I will be really interested to see how those track over time. I will be training for an ultramarathon this summer and I'll be keen to see how my hill and endurance scores change on these watches. It's, you know, the actual numbers is probably going to be a bit arbitrary, but it's certainly something where you can see the use case for looking at the trend in your hill and endurance score during your training if you are targeting hillier, longer events. The battery life has lived up to its billing so far, even slightly exceeded it actually. Um, obviously, you don't have the watch linked to Garmin Connect, so I'm not getting notifications in, uh, which will reduce battery life but on the first charge I was getting six or seven days uh, of use with the always on screen enabled and uh, that's with multiband GPS tracking going. The occasional little top up because I had to plug the watch in uh, to manually transfer activities across to check accuracy and that kind of thing but overall battery life looks like it's going to live up to Garmin's numbers on a 90 minute run I did yesterday it dropped by 9% which again tallies up pretty closely to Garmin's estimates for multiband tracking with the always on screen enabled so yeah it's Nothing particularly exciting on this model, the middle model, but certainly the 51mm model's battery life looks really interesting. Like if you can have an AMOLED watch that's going to last you know, the best, better part of uh, two weeks uh, with NORS on screen enabled, that's going to be uh, a really interesting option on the market. Yeah, so far, uh, you know, the Epix Pro is another very, very good watch from Garmin. I'm not entirely sure it's completely necessary. They could have brought some of the features to older watches via software updates and just done that, but Obviously, the heart rate monitor is a hardware upgrade and the new sizes are interesting. So if the heart rate monitor continues to be this impressive, then that is genuinely quite exciting because it'd be great to really have good optical heart rate monitors out there. And the new sizes are interesting. Obviously, you have a small wrist. It's great that you now have the smaller watch available and the larger model really does offer, I think, quite an interesting option as an AMOLED watch. That's a, you know, a top sports watch of all of Garmin's best features and very impressive battery life. Um, so I'm quite keen to test that watch out as well, you know, for our full review to see uh, if it really lives up to those big numbers that Garmin have on paper. So yeah, all in all, an interesting watch. At the moment, I'm not entirely convinced that I'd be going for this over the 4 and a 965 in particular, which is a lot cheaper and just such a brilliant watch with a bright screen and a lighter svelte body. Some people will prefer the you know, metal bezel and stuff you get on the Epix Pro, but I really like the sleek look of the 965 myself and the light build. But yeah, overall, great watch as you expect from Garmin. Do we need another watch in Garmin's high-end range? As I will, we'll dive into that a bit more detail in the full review, depending on how that heart rate tracking continues to shape up. So unlike the other guys, I've only had the Epix Pro for a short while, so I've only really been able to squeeze in a couple of runs and get a few days with it to get a sense of what it's like to live with. Now I've used the Epix uh, Gen 2 long term. It's a watch that I've really liked until I've kind of picked up the 4965 and realised that's probably enough watch for me now, but. It's a watch that I've used long term and wanted to. So in terms of the Epix Pro, I had the middle version, so the 47 millimeter version, which is not too dissimilar from the original Gen 2 Epix, so obviously it was only in one size. It's the same case size, it's the same uh, screen resolution size, the, ultimately the design feels very similar. I quite like the fact they've gone a little bit brighter in terms of the strap that you can get with it. So. It kind of works in terms of that um, titanium bezel, which is the version I had, and it's a slightly more expensive um, version to go for. Um, in terms of the kind of running performance, and obviously there was a lot of things we couldn't test because we didn't have access to connect, uh, Garmin Connect to pair and see a lot of the data that we could do from the kind of those new software features. Now, in terms of what I could look at, was ultimately things like uh, kind of GPS performance, the performance of the heart rate monitor, and generally what it's like to kind of use that watch and how the battery life performs because there's a lot of numbers promised in terms of improvements on that front now 
My first run I did was a, a kind of easy kind of 10 mile run with it. I had the original Epix on that was paired to a Garmin HRM uh, Pro Plus um, chest strap. And then I had the uh, Epix in multiband mode as well as I did with the Epix Pro. Now, in terms of that run, in terms of the performance, all very solid as I would probably, you know, you'd expect. I think, you know, not a massive amount of change in terms of what's in here, in terms of delivering that um, run tracking. Things like distance covered, things like kind of average pace, all the kind of metrics I expect to be there seem to be kind of on the money really. Now, obviously without having Garmin Connect, I can't really dig into the maps to see how well the multiband performed, but ultimately in terms of that core data, it seemed to, it seemed to suggest the same kind of level of tracking ultimately for me. The one that I was really looking at was the heart rate monitoring and what I would see from that. Because obviously we, Garmin has changed uh, to a new kind of optical sense here. Now in terms of the steady run that I did, it generally matched up in terms of numbers. Again, I'm only looking on the watch and, and what I'm is available on the watch to kind of see. And in terms of that data, average and kind of max, while not identical, they were pretty kind of even paid. The heart rate zones were kind of, you know, the times I spent in the heart rate zones was a little bit off in terms of how they compared. But I think ultimately once I can kind of customize those kind of heart rate zones and that will be you know probably a little bit more consistent um other things to kind of mention the mapping feels exactly the same as it does on the epics you know it's you know having that color screen makes it feel like a really nice rich experience and you know be able to kind of scroll through also the ability to kind of choose whether the map uh is kind of touch enabled as well it's a nice kind of little touch and something garmin has introduced recently as well um, so that all kind of worked really nicely overall. The only kind of little quirk, which I think is just a general bug that we've all kind of seen, I think most of us have seen, is that when you are you select it to multiband mode, it displays ultra track mode for some reason. But ultimately, in terms of the tracking itself, it delivered the kind of multiband kind of tracking experience as far as I can see compared to the Epics. I think to kind of mention on that long run was the battery life. Now, obviously, Garmin is promising some kind of improved battery numbers on the Epics in general. Uh, in terms of what I saw, I saw from that kind of hour and a half of running, I saw the battery drop by 10% on the Garmin Epics Pro, and it was 17% on the um, Garmin Epics Gen 2. And I obviously had that paired to Hori Monster Chest Trap as well, and I was using a mix of mapping and navigation and track back as well on both those watches. So you know the battery life in terms of that multiband mode you know is going to see a more severe drop off so that is something you're going to see in terms of kind of day-to-day -day battery i mean i said i've only used it for a couple of days and what i've kind of noticed overnight it's only been a couple of percent in terms of battery drop as well not a massive drop throughout the day you know and obviously i'm not having to you know not being able to have notifications and things like that running in the background so that will really give me a sense of how well it performs but in terms of using the sleep tracking the, the drop off is exactly the same as i had on the epic so overall on that kind of slow it's kind of slow kind of long run it was absolutely fine i did a quicker session as well kind of interval session to see how that heart rate monitor uh, kind of performed and generally it performed okay i still would get that feeling that i would still want to use a um heart rate monitor chest strap just because it gives you that that more consistency that more reliability and i think you know is this sensor ultimately giving you a massive improvement possibly but i think it's very uh too you know, it's too early for me to tell really but i felt it felt okay in that kind of interval session but ultimately i think you know quite you know the jury's still out and i would still like to run a little bit longer and a little bit more with it or that, and test that heart mode to see how it performs but yeah ultimately it feels very similar in terms of that run tracking experience to the original epics it feels good and it was good on the epics it feels good on the epics pro all those extra features like hill score endurance score um the kind of extra mapping features we're all going to be reliant on having access to Garmin Connect, which we don't have yet. So I can't really say how those have gone. But so far, so good with the Garmin Epix Pro for me. So initial thoughts on the Garmin Epix Pro is that a bit like the original Garmin Epix Gen 2, this feels like a very nice watch to run with and to live with. It's what you'd expect when you're looking at Garmin's top end range of its watches. Now, in terms of that experience, it feels very similar in terms of what I've been able to test compared to the original epics now in terms of the software features that are going to be unique to the epics pro they're not going to be that unique uh, forever we do know that garmin's going to roll these features back down to the gen 2 so what you're really looking at here is i think a couple of things i think you're looking at that improved um, optical heart rate sensor which i think the verdict is still out on how well that performs um and also, I think when I'm looking at the models that are there available now, now that you have those three models, 
if you didn't love the size of the um, the kind of main, uh, the Epix Gen 2, which obviously there was only one version, you now have a smaller version, you now have a bigger version. On the bigger version, you are getting considerably more battery life than you did get in the original Gen uh, Gen 2 epics. Now, what you're seeing that in is you're seeing that in always on mode, you're seeing that in GPS modes, and it's showing that with the AMOLED display, Garmin is able to get that battery to go a little bit further, even with that color screen. So I think from that point of view, if you're looking for a Garmin with an AMOLED that's gonna go a little bit longer, whether it's um, with or without that always on display, the Garmin Epix Pro, the biggest size, looks like it might be a good fit for people. In terms of that pure run tracking and software side of things, I think ultimately when you know that it's gonna, those features are gonna get rolled back to the older watch, I don't think there's a massive amount you're gonna miss on. So really what it comes down for me is if you want that bigger battery life and bigger case on the Epix Pro, the bigger size, and you potentially want a, an, an optical heart rate monitor and heart rate sensor that potentially give you better tracking when you are doing your runs or doing something, um, anything kind of running focused or kind of high intensity stuff as well. So that's how I kind of see it. Personally, I think, if I had the, if you know, if you're someone that's got the Epix Gen 2 and you are, I mean, you're not too fussed about having, you know, the case size, you're happy with the bat level of battery life and that heart rate monitoring is fine for you and you probably, like a lot of people, use external heart rate monitor chest track because I think most people have to with a newer one as well, then there probably isn't a huge amount to say there's an, you need to upgrade. But it's gonna, it's a nice watch. Is it like a massive upgrade from the original um Gen 2 Epics, I'm not 100% convinced, but you know, it feels like one that's gonna be solid overall and a good option at that kind of price point that Garmin has it at. And hopefully maybe that heart rate monitoring, uh, we'll, we'll see an improvement that would actually mean there's a little bit less reliance on uh, external heart rate monitor shout but I don't think that's gonna be the case overall anyway. So that's our early look at the Garmin Epix Pro. We'll come back with our full review as soon as we can. Now we can access uh, all of the new features on the watch. Please dive into the comments below and say what you're excited about with this watch or what you're not excited by. Uh, please like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.